Welcome back. Now, Wishlist Member has an interesting set of features for individuals that you want to have access to specific content, but only if they have joined by a specific date. And the reason this system works is because Wishlist Member protects specific pages with specific membership products that you are going to set up. So inside of Wishlist Member, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your content control area. And you want to make sure that the content scheduler is enabled, the content archiver is enabled, and the content manager is enabled. Now when we're talking about a page with specific content that's for our membership, what we can do inside of Wishlist Member is to go to the archiver area. And you'll notice here that there are going to be specific products that we can have a specific archive date for. And in this case, what we can do is we can set a specific date that a product will be archived and only the individuals that have access to this particular part of the product prior to the archive date will retain access. You're then going to click update. Individual will not be able to add this specific product to their inventory because it will technically be archived after a specific date. Individuals that have access prior to this date will have access to this particular page or content. Now this is slightly different than a drip feature which is common amongst membership platforms. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Before moving on to content scheduling, an important aspect of managing your membership site needs to be discussed. When you purchase use of a course platform, you're basically purchasing an all-in-one system. It is possible to direct people into a course platform using an external system, like an affiliate network, or a shopping cart like Thrivecart. That same feature exists if you choose to deliver your content in a WordPress-based platform using a plugin like Wishlist Member. And it's definite that using platforms like Vimeo in order to serve your video will be more work than if you just uploaded everything to your all-in-one platform. You're going to want to be careful about relying on one platform for all of the features inside of your membership platform. The more independent processes you have, the more you'll be able to switch out and interchange if one part of the process starts to go wrong. That will not be the case with a course platform. If one thing goes wrong, you will not have access to the entire revenue stream from your membership. And so as you construct your membership, you'll want to give thought to having some level of independence for different portions of the revenue stream. This will especially be true as you notice more and more platforms will be combining the features to give you one place to execute your entire membership. You want to think about this as you make choices and decisions as to which platform you are going to use or which combination of platforms you are going to use. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, it's possible that instead of having some content to appear to some members, depending on their join date, you may want to have content appear to members on a specific schedule. And in all membership platforms, there is a specific way in which you are going to do that. Now, if you're going to do this in Wishlist Member, what you're going to do again is to make sure that your scheduler, archiver, and manager are turned on. And then within a specific page that's protected by a specific product, what you're going to do is to go to your scheduling area. What you can do is to make it so that certain products appear after specific period of days and show for a specific period of days. However, in this case, we're going to be looking at a specific page. And so we're going to go to the pages area and we're going to choose a specific page. We're then going to set a content schedule for that specific page. We're going to make it so that this page within a specific product that we are going to name is only going to show after a specific period of days. So for example, we may only want this page to show up after the first month, and we're going to want it to show for the rest of the membership, which in this case, we're going to leave this area blank. We have just basically set a content schedule for a specific page within a specific product. We're then going to click Set Content Schedule. And basically, what we can do within Wishlist Member is we can schedule specific aspects of specific memberships to drip to the participants on a specific schedule. You can do the same thing in platforms like Teachable. 
For example, if we go into the drip area, you are going to be able to set content based on specific sections inside of your curriculum. So for the sake of this exercise, we're going to create two additional sections of this individual membership product. What we can then do is within the drip area is we can set a schedule for each individual section and we can send out a specific email announcement when each section goes out. So what we've now done is we've set a schedule for each section and each student that comes through this particular membership will get the content in each section according to the schedule that we set. This is also called drip content within memberships. If you're going to use a platform like Thrivecart Learn, you can drip content. And what you can do is you can set a schedule for specific content. So we can determine that we are going to drip out specific lessons on specific dates. And so we're going to make sure that we specify when the lesson is going to be given to the individuals according to our schedule. So regardless of which platform you're going to use, you can make sure that individuals that join your membership will get that content on a specific schedule. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, depending on which platform you choose to use in order to deliver your membership content, what you're going to notice is that some memberships are bundles of individual products that you already have. Now, as a case, your customer may or may not have a search feature inside of their course area. You're now looking at Thrivecart Learn, and you'll notice here that the customer won't necessarily have a search feature to find specific courses on their course platform. However, this particular course platform actually does have a search feature for the individual products. And each of these individual products can be one product within a bundle that is your membership. One of the things you can do within specific courses is you can tag each course with specific categories. For example, we've chosen a specific category for this particular course. And what we can do is we can use those tags or categories for specific courses that are going to be related. In this case, that's what we're going to do. When you're able to tag specific courses within your membership, what you're basically doing is giving the user the opportunity to find categorizations that you may make for them. And so in this particular case, what we can do is we can categorize and we can find specific products with specific tags. What this allows you to do is to provide the user a specific experience by directing them to specific courses within your membership for specific purposes. Again, all of this depends on how your content delivery platform is organized and whether or not there is a search feature within that platform for the customer. One thing you can do is when you have limited features, you can still add in specific tags and descriptors. However, you may need to designate them with a hashtag. In some cases, this may give your customer a workaround depending on how easy it will be to search for the description. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, now in this course, we've seen various ways for you to be able to construct a membership. Obviously, you can use a platform like Teachable where you have everything, including the paging, including the protection, including the content delivery, as well as a shopping cart. However, if any one of these processes do not work for some reason, you'll lose access to all of them. So if you wanted to use Teachable for part of the process, there are other elements that you can construct your membership with elsewhere, whether you choose to use a course platform like Teachable at all. You will need to create a payment link that is a recurring payment. You can do that on a site like Thrivecart, or you can do it by using the shopping cart inside of an affiliate network. Regardless of which shopping cart system you use, you are going to want to make sure that two things happen when your customer makes their purchase. You want to make sure that there is an integration with your autoresponder so that upon purchase, the individual is added to your email marketing list. You also want to make sure there's automated integration with your membership platform so that when an individual stops paying, they will then be locked out of your content. And if there is no direct integration, you may need to create a custom integration using either webhooks or a combination of webhooks and third-party cloud-based connector Zapier. Once the user has a login and password and is part of your membership, you may want to deliver your content on a schedule 
or in an archived fashion. And finally, you may want to provide your user categorization if you have multiple products within your membership so that you can direct them to specific resources for specific purposes. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.